I don't know what's going on. I'm we're keeping this in now. I don't know what's going on, but just this is behind the curtain for the achievers. This is going to be a cold open, S SNL style. I'm going to let you in on a secret. We have a program. We use Zencaster for everyone at home knows, and. They're gonna feel like is that why you feel so close to the mic? No, that's just because he's that close to the mic. I'm just I'm just that close to the mic, and <laughs> the wavelengths are like going up and down like this. And really quick, hmm. we have that we have like basically like a little add-on for MP3s, and of course ZenCaster had to pick today to to fully upgrade and change everything about the entire. <laughs> All right, okay. All right. I was doing the thing. I was trying to, was trying to be so serious. <laughs> Alex is also enjoying a major melon, all um like me. I enjoyed a major melon on screen uh, camera. I don't actually have one. Wow, that's sad. I don't have one with me. Mm. Really you quick, Alex. You gonna stop everything and just go get one? I do. I will. But really quick, what are your yeah. thoughts on the new flavor? Because this isn't just like like any Mountain Dew flavor. This is it, brand new. This is to the staple of Mountain Dew flavor. So what do you think? This is, this is probably one of my favorite flavors. If It tastes like a watermelon Jolly Rancher. <clears throat> it very much does. Um, now, you say favorite flavor. Mm -hmm. Just to give the scope to people at home, what are some of your favorite Mountain Dew flavors? Just right, so like they this... know, know, their, know your style, you know? All right, of course. Just, uh, you know, I have to have the original because that's where uh, it comes from. Of course. Uh, that's we have this one. I have the frostbite, which is the one that has the shark on it. Frostbite. Um, I used to be really big into whiteout, but I haven't had it in so long. I don't remember the flavor. I had whiteout a lot as a kid, so much yeah, so same. that you don't like it after a while. Like I drank it so much <laughs> okay. that I eventually was like, I don't like the same more, and I just stopped drinking it. Mm -hmm. Um, voltage. Yep, one of my um, favorites. Voltage. One of my favorite ones, and they'll never bring it back. Honestly, this one's pretty close. And I, if not, it could be the same one. Um, the red, orangish game feel from when Modern Warfare 3 came out. There was a red one, and then there was a blue one. The now, now, you're bringing this up. <clears throat> what are you thinking on this KFC Mountain Dew? Now, you forever... For, oh, so you don't know this. I was just, like, I was just about to explain. Lem, is that the lemonade one? Or? It's... it's eh, it, so it's like Orange it's, or yellowish? It's called... Oh, Let me see. Thunderstruck? <laughs> it's not called I think I, I think I saw it. Lightning? Oh, God. It's it's literally was supposed to be made to complement the KFC chicken. It's called Sweet Lightning. Sweet Lightning. There you go. And it's it was created to complement KFC. Oh, it's sweet peach and smooth honey. That sounds disgusting when you put it that way. But I mean, it does taste good. it tastes pretty good. I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's anywhere near the top Mountain Dew flavors, but mm -hmm. it, it does taste nice. I, I would it's not even in probably my top ten, but it's it's good. Um I don't know. I didn't try it because I was too scared to try it. I get it. It's orange and very <laughs> scary. It has a very scary color. Like like you're drinking it's gasoline. Good. I get it. <laughs> but it it did taste pretty good. No, uh, what, uh, what you didn't even say. What was your favorite flavor? Oh, it's mm. my favorite. I think is is the new is the new flavor probably. Yeah, that's what I say. I think it's between this and frostbite. I'm not like, cute. Yeah. Uh, did, did I like frost? No, I'm thinking of whiteout. I I haven't had frostbite. I don't think. I don't think frost, I. Have. Yeah, frostbite is the one with, that has that shark on it. And I, I, I maybe I've had it once. It because it has a shark on it. But man, that <laughs> Alex loves cold. sharks. It's described as a burst of icy refreshment and cool melon. Okay, sure. Yeah, this it says the the similar flavor is the dark berry and game fuel one, which the blue one, which I was talking about. The dark berry one, I feel like. No, see. Is no. this the one that had the dark night on it? That sounds that right. That sounds right. I remember really loving game fuels whenever game fuel was i would always get the red game fuel don't know what flavor that was but okay. it was my favorite when it was mountain dew modern warfare 2 codes and modern warfare 3 codes was when i was mm -hmm. really into mountain dews i'd buy them and get the free codes for double xp off of them stack them because you because remember you could stack these before release oh yeah. i remember having like <laughs> i think days i think of of, of like of double xp mm -hmm. or something like that i loved it it was a great time yeah 
Oh, weird. They, they're, they're, the game fuels are cans now. I remember they were just the bottle. I actually have... I ordered, so I went to my father's house to hang out with him. Citrus um, cherry, that's the one that I remember. It was the Mountain Dew uh, game fuel. It says citrus cherry. I don't remember that at all. But I did oh. hang, hang out with my father, and I tried one of the <laughs> new Mountain Zero game fuels. Phenomenal. Mm-hmm. They're in these, like, futuristic cans... Mm-hmm. Um, I'll like, go get. I'll go get one in a second. But it's 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 a, it's a, like uh it's like the I forget which uh, is it's, it's either Monster has a can like that or Amp, but it's like the black tab and you can close it, yes. reseal it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it has no it, no purpose in this timeline. It's clearly from the future. Someone stole it and brought it back. But oh, dude, it's I super love those. cool. It's super cool. I like it. I'm I'm a fan of this new. Mountain Dew thing they're doing with like the direction because the game fuel tastes super good again. I need to go mm-hmm. get one in a second. Second, Major Melon, probably my favorite Mountain Dew now. It's phenomenal, mm-hmm. it tastes great, nice and fizzy still. And you get it's strong, but but not too bad. Now, I need to taste the zero sugar one, it's been very hard to find. I, I, I haven't found it, I haven't found it. It's only been the regular. I want to try the zero sugar to really taste that one, and then I'll have like a, a full jury. I, 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 did, what were your thoughts on Code Red? That's one of the popular ones that I never liked. I enjoyed it when it was a thing. Okay. But I, I think, like you said earlier with the whiteout, I drank it so much that it, uh, mm-hmm. it just got boring. To it me. happens, right? And I, I mean, that's the, I, I had code red go up my nose once because I was laughing so hard, and you, and you know that story. <laughs> I do. That was code I, red. I do. That was code red. Yeah, you splattered the walls. I made him laugh so hard. Goes up my nose, hence goes on the wall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I definitely made him laugh so hard that he spat all over a wall <laughs> that was really funny um but don't worry we're not a mountain dew podcast although we could probably be we, we our mm-hmm. knowledge could probably we, need to, we could be a we good five part get, episode we need to get as many flavors as possible from everywhere like all the different ones and then do like a taste test we do which ones we're like we're like rank them yeah. you know which mountain dew is the better one i wonder if they're like remember the orange lime wire one God, yes. I remember liking that, too. I think. I think I, think I, I tried it one. once, and I, was, and I was a little, like, ugh, because it was a little too much. It, it, some of the news, I, I'm reminded of the Do USA. <laughs> God, that name. <laughs> I feel like that was a lot. I feel like I took a sip and went. <laughs> yeah, because it's just, it literally is just, like, I feel like it's just the three flavors put together, like Code Red, White mm-hmm. Out, and whatever the, or some other one is. Uh, crack Cocaine is the other one you're not thinking of. That's what it is. Yeah. It's, it's a bit much, but... It, I don't. I didn't. It's one of those things where like you wish you liked it. Reminds mm-hmm. me of birthday cake Oreos. Have you ever had a birthday cake Oreo? It's like diabetes it, and, you, and, and, and and you palm of your hand. So it's incredible how much sugar is in one cookie. It's like a feat of technology that no man or woman should ever experience. But <laughs> when you eat one birthday cake Oreo, that is all a human can consume in a 24-hour period. You cannot eat more. Any more, you will be set into a diabolic shock and die. It's like, it's, it's, so it's, you it's, have to play the game wisely. It's like marshmallows. It's, it's just too much. Oh, my wife disagrees with you on that one. Marsh- she oh. loves marshmallows. She'll sit there and eat a whole bag. I can't with the marshmallows. Oh, I did that I when I was little, and I, and I like the, like, the little mini ones. Oh. And it's in it, it was a big bag, and I was just like... Just chowing down like popcorn. Mm-hmm. The next thing, I'm I'm just throwing up on it. I was like, just about to be like, again. this is gonna end with you throwing up, isn't it? Yes. Like, you can't trust children with sugar and access to the sugar, because mm-hmm. you don't know limitations yet, and you just vomit. Yeah, all like I, like it just tastes good. So you're like, okay, I'm gonna keep eating it <laughs> until I just don't want it anymore. It, it tastes good. I'm gonna keep eating it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I almost got to it, but I stopped myself. Don't worry, we're not a marshmallow eating podcast or a Mountain Dew podcast. No, we are the Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast. We come to you every single Friday sometime when you need us the most. That is to deliver you the news that you need to know. We come to you at the podcast service of your choice or YouTube every single Friday. Podcast services around the globe. Now, remember... Patreon.com slash Easy Achievers. That's where you go to support us. If you actually want to support us financially, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna be real with you. It's a pandemic going on, right? We get it, right? You don't you don't want to do that, right? You don't you probably not have that dollar that you can easily spend on patreoncom youtubers to access our multiple tiers and DM us your question, comments, concerns, updates, and or ideas. So I understand you cannot do that just yet. So I've come to you today with an easy access to do all of your helping needs. You can do it for free. You can go to scroll down. Use that scroll wheel right on that mouse, or Use that thumb. Use that thumb. Get, get you know, yeah, Alex is doing some <laughs> demonstration like a Price is Right model. <laughs> Dude, demonstrate that for me. Now scroll, scroll down. There you go. Scroll down. Yes, yes. Show that scroll. Yeah, scroll down. Yes, stroke it with and, and, and hit that subscription button. That's right. That little red subscription. That subscribes you to our YouTube channel. Now, you're, I know you're saying, I'm listening on a podcast service of my choice. I'm not on YouTube. I have taste. Then you can go scroll down kind of sometimes there's sometimes still a review at the bottom sometimes they're not then click on our little account leave a five star review we love you we appreciate that only review if it's five star of those if you, <clears> anything <throat> less we come after you and your family kind of like taking the movie do you remember taken alex do i remember taken not not the not the show the liam neeson movie correct you didn't just ask that did you did you just ask that question I, you yeah, did I that to upset me. Reaction, you and did I really that to upset me. Go you did that to upset me. How dare you? <laughs> taking the movie, just you like taking. Remember when Liam Neeson was Ra's Ra's Ghoul? Oh my God, he was Ra's Ghoul. Mm -hmm. Batman Begins. Mm -hmm. Ra he was Ra's Ghoul. Oh my God, I can't believe I forgot about that. He had like weird robes, and he was. Oh God, he was even old in that movie. Because, like, he couldn't really it's, do much, but it was so it's cool. crazy because I feel like Liam Neeson is... Oh, my God, who else? Is, is there another actor? Like, maybe, I guess, Nicolas Cage. They always look the same for, That's like, true. 50 years. Like, they, they it's like once they get to a certain, like, age, they just look the same. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's, like, it's a, I mean, it's a guy thing. You know, once mm -hmm. you hit that certain age, you just look the same for, like, until you get to this, like, 70s and you start getting gray. Yeah, and but like, having money great. helps a lot, too. For sure, for sure. Being rich beyond your wild streams helps a lot. I mean, trust me, yeah, I'm probably in 30 years, I probably won't look the same. <laughs> you're like, a, I love that, you're like, I'm not going to have the money, I'm, I'm, I'm going to feel the age every moment <laughs> of my life. Um, heads up, my computer's been acting weird, so oh. it ran, it ran, it sometimes, like, it just shuts off, and I don't know if it's overheating or anything, so I have a, a thing to where it's just to show that it's cooling. Mm -hmm. If it shuts off and I leave, I'll come back. Don't panic, alright, I'll panic. Yeah, so yeah, I'll completely guys, derail I'll be, I'll the show. Back. I'll completely we'll derail. I'll start screaming. <laughs> I'm, it's going to be bad. Don't leave, please. <laughs> now, Alex, let's go to the news. Before we get into the news, I like to ask you a question every single week. What have you been playing? Hmm. What have I been playing? And I can realize that I'm frozen, so ignore that audience. No. Um, I've been playing, which I just started, Persona 5 Strikers. Mm -hmm. We started this last night. How much have you yes. played? I've only hit inter intro stuff. Yeah, I've only hit intro really uh, like maybe an hour, hour and a half. Okay. Yeah, just because it was really late and because... Uh, I was playing some. I was playing Dark Souls two beforehand, and I was like, you know what? Let me put some time into it. So I put. I went and put some time into it, and um, I mean, dude, it's it's Persona. I love it, and it's it. It feels like a good sequel. Like I was it's, just it's about weird. to say this. I was just about to say this. Uh, it immediately blew out my expectations when I started the game, mm -hmm. where I was expecting a kind of like persona but not really it feels like another yeah. game you know you get like maybe a title menu or some weird thing it's, it's and, like, and and like it's, it's like it's bad to say but like a cheap down version of yeah. that yeah that's what yeah. you that's what you're expecting and then it starts and just it's like, just oh. it's just like before it's like you, yeah yeah it's like you just you're like oh let me go back to persona 5 yeah. you hit it boom it's just the next this is another 80 hours probably it's almost range how much it is like i it's mm -hmm. almost like i'm i'm watching it and like is this real <laughs> like it's almost like how because like it's just not i wasn't expecting such a commitment Co no yeah i was about to say just a commitment to like it, for it being like it's not a, a, a like a full-on like next game sequel like six or something like but, uh, i'll compare this to like uh the dragon quest 
a Warriors game where like okay. yeah when you play that game you're not expecting like a Dragon Quest game you're expecting this half half mm-hmm. guzzled down Musou type Dynasty Warriors light game I'm whereas gonna, in this I'm and it's fun and yeah this is the fun so fun. far so far this is super fun it, mm-hmm. it is super simplified I feel but maybe it will get more complicated but right now I feel like you have everything that you're gonna use in the game um no yeah especially if you have a persona 5 or royal save it does it's like oh here's extra stuff and it just like i had like six screens of stuff just popping i'm like oh my god okay. they, i just kept it just kept going i loved it, it was, I was just give me everything i have so many yeah. things that i probably won't use but i love it yeah i need to go back to it but i just been still in that soulsy mood so i just started two and it's just like i i it's, if it's hard to forget two is two is contentious in the in the fan base what are your stances on that now that this is so far this was not directed by it. miyazaki which is the you said what now this was not directed by miyazaki number two I mean, was you can definitely tell you can definitely tell it's it's it went in a whole different way okay but i am enjoying it because how different it is and i'm trying to like like uh compare it to one because right. i just i had beat remastered and i'm like oh i was you know that was fun i remembered all those bosses and then i jumped into two the only spot that i remembered was the very beginning where you go to the, like the hut and then to the left is this like that weird archway and then you see like a hippo monster and you're like uh do i fight that and you try to fight it and it kills and you're like i guess not so <laughs> you just ignore it hippo. it's the only part that i remember yeah you, once you started because i didn't remember any of it until i actually started it and then i remembered the it's like a little rock thing and you go through and there's just like a hippo like like big creature thing just sitting there right and you it's an optional thing you can if you if you kill it i think you get there's gold pine resin behind it but like if you kill it you get xp and things as a or souls but i don't remember anything else from like two and i'm like do i remember i played this for sure but like and then there uh, then i'll hit another area i'm like oh i remember this like it's i'm excited because i don't remember some of the stuff yeah it's, so it's almost like, like playing it again yeah it's, it's, that's why i'm excited when i play three i'm like because through is out of the souls games before i started doing all the replays three was the last one that i had played mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. so i'm wondering if i'll remember any of it i'm excited to try it again um i'm going through I, one right now so. as i was saying i saw you downloaded it because uh, we game share so my my phone popped up and it says dark soul remastered that ready to play i'm like what and then mm-hmm. i was like oh you downloaded it okay mm-hmm. so i'm wondering how you're feeling so far i'm very beginning but right now feels good i'm mm-hmm. still at the super super beginning so i can't tell you much yeah. i am excited to experience the increased frame rate i'm pretty sure isn't it in 60 oh yes okay if it is i can't wait to experience it uh, so far it's the normal you know run through get the sword get the get the shield and, that, and now i'm ready to fight so i'm yeah. excited to fight the boss and then i i remember dark souls one is is feeling like um almost like a labyrinth where like a, a labyrinth mm-hmm. where you eventually go back to the beginning and then go straight and fight the boss like i, I, I mm-hmm. like that's so much like dark oh, yeah souls to it's me, where crazy it's the level design in, yeah in one level design was like pure almost perfection how crazy everything intertwined and connected mm-hmm. like it's so almost it's, like it's, a spider web where there's always oh, yeah. always a way to get back connected. in the center yeah mm-hmm. yeah firelink shrine was the center for sure mm-hmm. yeah, yeah i have to i have to share uh share screens so we like watch you play it yeah i'll definitely do that now alex enough about mm-hmm. the games i want to bring up something that i think you guys can hear a train now uh, i i live near a, i live near a train now which don't worry a, just, not uh, now i always have but mm-hmm. i it's hilarious that every now and then i don't notice it but i'll be playing a game mm-hmm. and my and the people i'll play with will go choo choo and i'm like oh the train's coming like i don't even notice it now it's just it's yeah it's, it's a, forced to have it I, yeah i have trains passing by me mm-hmm. and i'll barely hear it and my wife was like do you hear that and i was like what and she's like you don't hear the train i was like oh no i've blocked it out so many yeah times. after a while you block it out so i i don't even at first i was like oh the train and then i went oh i'm doing a podcast oh they're probably gonna hear this so let me let me bring it up um but i want to talk about e3 now e3 of course if you don't know is the huge ginormous gaming event that happens every year 
basically is the center point of all gaming news and where the biggest news happens. Now, that of course didn't happen last year because of the C word. You know what I'm talking about now. Yeah. Now, now, it was reported, um, actually by Video Games Chronicle, that there will be some sort of digital event for E3 this year. Um, uh, the ESA actually released a statement, so I'm going to actually read that to you. So this is their statement, quote, We can confirm that we are transforming the E3 experience for 2021, and we'll soon share exact details on how we're bringing the global video game community together. We are having great conversations with publishers, developers, and companies across the board, and we look forward to sharing details about their involvement soon, end quote. And then pitch documents for the proposed digital show include three days of live stream coverage between June 15th and June 17th, original dates for the show. I apologize if you can hear that. I don't know why my wife is cleaning something up right now. I, I, no, I love it. It adds a homey environment to this right yeah, now. Yeah, I thought it was, it's bad because I thought it was my computer fan. So at first I was like, is that a plane? And then I went, that's probably a vacuum. It's probably a vacuum. Well, if, you, if, you, if, if people go back, if you start hearing it, you start seeing me do this. <laughs> if I start doing this I'm like, Incredibly I'm so panicking. But it's, it's, my my kids asleep. So what is she? It, so it must be dire. So either one of the dogs made an accident, mm -hmm. or I love you, babe. But she she spilled something. Because mm -hmm. that's a common thing in my household. Oh, of course, of course, I, you I, always spill I, something. I've told I've told her that um I'm gonna start getting sippy cups. <laughs> it, I mean I even I even, I even tipped something over it and it's killing me because like my arm was just like just randomly hit something. I'm like. Why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. I didn't ask you to do that. Mm -hmm. there, uh, there has to be an adult sippy cup. There has, there has to exist. I mean, right? I mean, I assume there is some sort of anti sip cup. Now we're probably just describing regular cups with lids. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's probably what, all it is. But um, back to back to the original statement. E three. Yep. Is it still relevant now? It, we always come back to this. We talked about it last year. I feel like th th thousands of times. So mm -hmm. I don't even want to really broach to talk about is, is it relevant. I wanted to talk to you about having this last year the way it was, having this last year without really any live um, events at all. Do you think E3 can still maintain this kind of digital thing that they're going to try and do? And if you go, I don't see the reason to use E3 as a place to go. Mm -hmm because you can do what they're doing for you so why go to this digital e3 thing at all um, where you can just literally do that whereas e3 before was a place that people gathered around rather than a tv screen basically so mm -hmm. what do you what do you think i think there's always going to be people that are going to want to have the experience of going there okay like like i think i pre i prefer the digital stuff because mm -hmm. it's easier and you know everything is just like oh you know it, you know it's safer of course it's um let's say if we wanted to go you know it, it, now we could just do it at home it's safe it's uh less expensive because it travels yeah but if you had the option to go and are able to i think people have or uh, there's a lot of people who who would rather do that though too mm-hmm so like I mean, if I mean if I had the option to go like like um, expense wise, I mean I I and it was safe I would go. Mm -hmm. But if it's an issue, at least people would have the option to have the digital one. And I'm wondering if they'll, if they'll do both. Mm. So okay. like I wonder if they'll do. I mean of course they you know have it there and they you know they they show it online. Mm. But I'm wondering what are they going to do incentive wise for you to actually go there like if you do go what's the incentive rather mm -hmm. than you just staying home yeah because i'm i'm assuming there has to be an incentive incentive to actually go there now because right. everybody's just gonna be like i'm just gonna stay home right yeah i, I want to see what they say specifically because are they specifically saying that there's gonna be we are conforming transforming to so it doesn't specifically say 
that it will only be digital. Although uh, you can probably assume that it, it will not have a specific venue this year. It will probably just be a digital event. So I'm curious if they're actually going to try and do an event you go to. Maybe in a limited capacity or some sort of thing like that. Or if it is all just digital, you go to e3.com and it's like um, DC Phantom. You remember that thing? The, the thing we watched? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's like that, where it's like a transforming website that you go to, and there's always a new thing being shown that you click on and go if, to. Yeah, if they make something like a website that's more interactive to make it feel like, you know, we're not there, but we can still participate in oh. things to where like, it makes it like it feels like we're more involved rather than just watching it on a, on a scheduled time, that right. would be cool. Just mm -hmm. so it makes you, because they have to make it to where where, like people always say, it's like is E three gonna be away, gonna, gonna go away? I say no because I feel like the 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 higher ups in our community will see that we need something to look forward to every year. Yeah. So it makes it to where like you know the hype is up and everything. So I don't. So I think that that's what they would they would do. I see what you're saying. I I. I... I, I would like to think, even if it does go away, something will replace it, whether it be a PAX or something else. Something else will take the eye of E3 and, and go somewhere else. So I'm not too worried, even if it does go away, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. Um, but let's move on. Alex, Microsoft is releasing xCloud for the web. It's going to go yeah. through a browser. As many people have probably figured, Microsoft will be releasing xCloud, their acclaimed streaming service, on a browser. Among other things, this will, of course, bring the service to arguably its most important platform, Apple products. So if you click on that little link, Alex, you can probably look at what I'm talking about here. But they actually detailed the browser experience that you'll be getting if you want to use this. Now, of course, you can use this on a PC, but I do think the big reason it will be, of course, to use it on an iPhone or an iPad because yeah. you cannot... As of right now, you use any sort of xCloud anything on an iPhone or iPad. You can, however, on Apple product, yeah. uh, Android, mm -hmm. uh, which is very upsetting. Um, there are a couple notes. It's not clear how this will stream, if it will be some sort of four, full 4K um, type of streaming service or not. Or I would assume it could, depending on your upload speed. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it could happen. Whether it be in good experience or smooth experience, I think is another question. But we'll see when it comes out. Not much details other than they announced it. They gave a little quick look at what it would look like. You can look up the pictures if you want. It looks very much like how Game Pass on PC looks right now. Uh, except the only difference is it has cloud gaming on it. Mm -hmm. It looks exactly the same. So I'm very excited. And I'll actually be able to use it <laughs> on my phone. Alex, what do you think? I'm. I mean, I'm excited. I want to. Um, I want. I do definitely. Like, I definitely am gonna try it because I played it on Android, but my phone. I feel like my phone was just a little too old because it was just running, really slow. But then I tried it again on a different phone, and it was running. I was. I tried Halo Five, and that was running pretty well. And then I tried Forza, and I tried Sea of Thieves, and they were all running really good. And I mean, for I don't know if it was. 4K. I don't think it was, but it was. It looked really good for it to be on a, you know, on a small phone. Okay. <clears throat> now, is it overkill if I want to put an iPad connected to my phone to my controller? I don't know. <laughs> like I do enjoy having it on the phone, but I feel like like my eyesight is bad, so I have to like do this, and I feel like I'm just like just like so close to it i'm like i need to scoot back a, bit, a little bit so when you were saying like you know this is really for the people that have it on the phone honestly i if i don't have if i have my laptop with me and if i'm somewhere i'll i'll just use my laptop mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah there's nothing wrong with that for sure definitely didn't want to come across as something like don't use it on a, on a pc no 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 for sure. I, th I think it looks I mean, great like, especially with that picture that i mean that picture is for sure from a pc so i mean it yeah, looks yeah, great yeah. I think it. I mean, it'll definitely run better too. No, I guess depending on what you're using it on, but it would mm -hmm. probably run better than what a phone is, arguably. That you could, of course, have a crazy. Well, I mean, yeah, I was gonna say there's more 
Uh, I guess it depends on the phone, like you said. Yeah, because definitely. there's more pixels on a computer, but now, I mean, there's some phones that do 4K. Yeah, know? there's some phone that you can get across 4K in quotes. Um, yeah. Uh, really quick, just a quick announcement. Xbox did announce a new wireless headset over the week. It is called the Xbox Wireless Headset. Um, uh, it's... It's if you if you <laughs> if you uh, ever have seen the accoutrements on other wireless headsets, it's basically the same thing. You can it does support Windows Sonic, Dolby Atmos, and DTS headphone. Has an auto mute feature and voice isolation. It reduces background noise and allows for crystal clear chat. Um, it's pretty light. I don't remember the actual weight, but it's incredibly light. Um, the really cool thing about one of these it's it's actually Bluetooth. So you don't need a cable or a base station. You just connect it via Bluetooth to either like your phone or like your system, which is pretty cool. That's cool. I That's like it. Cool. I, I can use it on my phone or on my Xbox too. And I don't know if this is true, but someone did say that in theory you could use it on um, both and just have it connected two things at once, which is pretty wild. And I was like, if that's true, that sounds awesome. I can connect to a TV or my phone and to a t the TV and like watch. That sounds awesome. The weight is 11 ounces, so it's less than a pound. Yeah, so so it's incredibly light. So you don't have to worry about um, if you have, like, you know, like, maybe big ears or something. It's not too much pressure. Yeah. Yep. Um, Alex, I want you to pick this next story. Do I go, what's coming to Game Pass or Bungie's expansion? Hmm. Go to Bungie's expansion. What's Bun going on? Bungie's rapid expansion. Bungie is doing a massive redesign and expansion of its Bellevue HQ in Washington, which are, takes its size from, get this, 84,000 square feet to 208,000. This is to allow for future growth, but also new hires. Last report was that a quarter of Bungie employees had never set foot in Bungie mm -hmm. HQ because they were all hired during the pandemic as the studio oh, staffed dang. up rapidly. Bungie will also open a studio internationally over in Amsterdam, which will be mainly about publishing and marketing. Very interesting. I wonder if they'll start publishing games now um, mm. once they have that set up. That will happen in 2022. Bungie is bringing on new high up hires while retaining their old crew and forming two distinct teams going forward. Luke Smith and Mark Noseworthy will continue to be attached to the Destiny universe with its... Um, uh, what is this? Oh, giving players hope that Destiny content will continue indefinitely past Lightfall, the announced 2022 expansion, and that Destiny will be expanding into, quote, additional media, end quote. What does that additional media mean, I wonder? Mm -hmm. I assume a TV show, maybe? Maybe. Maybe a book? They loved books in uh, when they were doing Halos, so. Yeah, they had a bunch of those. I Like, I always enjoyed, like, if I go to the library and I see a, a Halo one, I'm like, oh, crap, they actually have it. Mm -hmm. like, it's kind of surprising. The Halo Reach book was amazing. I loved that book. I, w I read it as a kid. I oh, my God, it was so good. I loved it. And then, of course, that lined up perfectly with the game that was coming up, I believe, around that mm -hmm. time. I remember reading that and then playing the game, like, right after that. Um, but this is crazy. They're a giant staff up, giant increase to the HQ, and another studio. It's pretty wild. Now... If you're wondering, like, oh my God, what, what, how did they afford all this? They did get a deal with NetEase, so they did uh, get in bed with a Chinese um, mega corp, I guess you could call them, giant institute, and they got a basically fund to make a new IP. So they're making some new IP. I forget the code name off the top of my head, but they are making a new IP for them. And as part of the deal, of course, they got a giant lump sum of money to upgrade their entire HQ. So. That is where the majority of that money is probably coming from. But I'm excited. Alex, what would be something you'd want to see from that? Additional media could mean a lot of things. But do you, would, um, do you think a TV show would even work? Or would I you was, just want to see a I book was, or a comic? I was thinking a lot of people have been doing it lately, but like, like I don't know if they'd be partnered, but like, for example, Netflix, because that's the really a big one right now. Uh, they make some type of like anime for like some type of, sh like let's say even a Destiny. Mm. Like imagine a Destiny, like a Destiny show. Because mm -hmm. I know they have, you know, Dragon's Dogma. They have Castlevania on Netflix. Perfect. It'd be yeah. perfect. It'd be perfect in my opinion. Making Ark one. Yeah, Ark. I forgot about that. Yeah, so like, I mean, Vin, I mean even... Vin Diesel. I, yeah, so Des <laughs> if, they, if they make like a Destiny one and they go back on the lore, you know, of, of the, the, all, the, all the people, that'd mm -hmm. be pretty cool. I think there's a lot of potential with a Destiny, 
Especially if you focus on lore stuff. There's a bunch of cool lore stuff. I am like 10% in the lore, so don't don't think I know everything. But I do I, I do love the Dredgen Yore story. I liked that a lot. I liked the Dark Universe story specifically a lot too. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's one other one I'm forgetting right now. But basically everything around Thorn and around the Stranger is really cool. So I would love that in a show for everyone who plays destiny and listens to the podcast i would love that into a show that would be cool maybe a season of the dredge in your story or something like that that'd be cool alex yeah that'd be interesting alex we finished with this bunch of stories so let's go back to this game pass thing now every few weeks they do release this coming soon to game pass thing and we usually try to read it on the show and i just want to bring this up again so coming to game pass soon is as follows code vein pc february 18th hills of eternity 2 dead fire ultimate edition cloud and console february 18th wreck fest cloud console and pc february 18th killer queen black cloud and console february 23rd dirt 5 surprising already Mm -hmm. cloud console and pc february 25th elite dangerous console february 25th super hot mind control delete on pc february 25th and then in case you missed it, Monster Hunter World is on the cloud right now. And then on February 18th, Ultimate Rebels will have new ways to play these seven cloud-enabled games on their Android devices. Bridge Constructor Portal, Mark Reed, Neoverse, Nowhere Prophet, Spiritfarer, The Little Acre, Ukulele, and The Impossible Lair. And everything oh, else is uh, just some... Th- what was that? Uh, I was just I was rereading on the thing it says that uh, these games are enabled with uh, touch controls. Yes, yeah, yeah, that was the new way to play. Sorry, I think I skipped that. My bad. Yeah, fully customizable Xbox touch controls, which is really really cool. I mm-hmm. didn't even know they were doing that, so you can play them with touch controls now. Yep, that's pretty cool. And yeah, because the first one was Minecraft Dungeons, and I tried that, so it is it was running pretty good. And just really quick, you'll get some new Ultimate perks coming soon. Rogue Company gets an Xbox Season 1 starter pack. Path of Exile, you get a Gothic armor set February 18th. And that Rogue Company thing is available now, if I didn't say that. And then you'll have some new Xbox Game uh, Pass quests. Um, Just play Control and get 5 stealth kill in Dishonored 2. And then these are the games leaving soon. Dirt 4 on console is leaving February 24th. Um, Leaving February 28th. (laughs) Momodora. Revere Under the Moonlight console and PC. Mother yeah, Russia uh, Yeah, yeah. Mother Russia Bleeds PC. Oxen Free console and PC. Jackbox Party Pack 4 on console. Vambress Cold Soul console and PC. And just as a reminder, if you want those games, you can still buy them 20% off before they leave the store to lock in that Game Pass uh, Ultimate. I want to try Elite Dangerous. No, no, I was just about to ask this, Alex. Now, Alex, something fun to add to this. What is one game you'd like to try out of this list? There's two. Elite Dangerous and Killer Queen Black. I want to try Killer Queen Black as well. I do not know how fun that is without all five people or four, however many it is. Mm -hmm. But I want to play Killer Queen Black with you for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, Super Hot, Mind Control Delete is something I definitely want to play. I loved the first Super Hot, so that is something I'm definitely looking at as playing. Yeah, I want to try Elite Dangerous because it was pretty much... I think this came out before No Man's Sky. But um, this was a... It's an open world adventure in space. And it's and I think it, it did what No Man's Sky didn't before. Like, better. It did it better. So it made it easier to traverse with online people because it's a, it's a multiplayer a game. Right. So I'm interested to see how it runs and everything because I like space travel and stuff like that. I want to I give it a try. No, I get, I get you. I, I I know, like I can picture Elite Dangerous in my head. I cannot picture the gameplay of Elite Dangerous. I don't yeah. even know how you play the game, if I'm being completely honest. But it did look cool whenever I looked at it. Mm-hmm. Alex, I'm titling this next segment Making Good on Their Promise. All right. Mm-hmm. Now, if you remember back in October, I think it was, maybe even November... Um, Oh, nope, it's right here, as we detailed in October. So in October, Xbox, uh, before the uh, console even came out, they were detailing, if you remember, Alex, the kind of ability they might have to upgrade past games without patching them at all. 
-hmm. So they could increase the ability of a game to run without the developer having to even touch the game with a patch. They're actually doing this now with a couple games. Now, it is called FPS Boost, and they actually announced a couple games that's going to work for So they're, this is the first assortment of backwards compatibility games that will support FPS boots on Xbox Series X and S. So today, beginning today, so this has already happened as of recording and as a post. Far Cry 4, New Super Lucky's Tale, Sniper Elite 4, UFC 4, and Watch Dogs 2 all are getting the FPS boost. Now, I don't know if anywhere in the specific article they even mention each thing, but I know they say right here, Super Lucky's Tale can run up to 120 frames per second, wow. and then UFC 4 delivers improved frame rate performance, um, specifically on the Series S, and can now run at 60 frames as well. On so, the, so those are the only two that really change so like for example watch dogs 2 because i was interested in that right is watch dogs 2 not in 60 frames so the the whole thing is called fps boost so i think it's fair to say that all of these are getting 60 frames 60 frames I um so okay. yeah this is pretty cool um they don't detail specifically and i do wish there was an easy way to prove this without mm -hmm. just an eyeball or something but mm -hmm. um uh i wonder here let me read this little excerpt this is just the beginning. We will announce and release more titles featuring FPS boost soon, as well roll out new menu icons and system settings in an upcoming system update. Starting this spring, you can go into the Manage Game section for any title where you'll be presented with a new Compatibility wow, Options button that mm -hmm. will allow you to toggle FPS boost as well as Auto HDR on or off. Wow. There will also be a new indicator informing you when a game is running with FPS boost whenever you hit the Xbox button on your controller. You decide how you want to play your favorite games, whether it is in the original form or with FPS boost. That yeah, the, is pretty cool. Yeah, the HDR, auto HDR thing, that pops up already, I uh -huh. think, because I was playing... God, what was it? Um, I think it was Medium or even Dark Souls 2. And um, when I hit the Xbox button at the top where the clock is and stuff like that, it says uh, auto HDR or HDR with the little symbol on it. Like it shows it already. So I was like, I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, I th I don't remember if when H auto HDR became a thing. But that's been mm. a thing. I wonder if this is to add HDR to games that didn't have it before. They didn't have it before, Ass yeah. Assumably, I believe that's what it is. I don't know. But, uh, but assumably, that's what it is. Very cool. Because there's definitely games that don't have it. Very cool. I love this feature. Mm -hmm. PlayStation Y. I, I'm more of an Xbox guy anyways. But PlayStation Y. Where where is the where is these things at? Bloodborne 60, anyone? Bloodborne 60. Anyone? Look, look. There's that guy that did it at 60, but the resolution's at like 720, and you got to do some crazy stuff with your system. As, soon, as soon as I heard, you have to do crazy stuff to the system, clucked out. I was like, I'm not touching this thing. I'm not messing with this. I'm not messing with this. <laughs> I'm not opening this thing up to do what God knows what you want me to do. This thing, no, no, mm -hmm. not happening. No. I'm excited. I'm also excited. No. What's one game that you'd love this feature on? Can you think of something? Or if it's something that's not even in your mind right now that maybe is on PlayStation, what's a game that you'd like an FPS boost or even maybe a remaster that's close to something that uh, the Xbox feature could give to it? Hmm. I mean, I don't know if it did it already. I'm, I think the Halo's got them already, right? Mm -hmm. Halo's pretty set with all their Series X updates and things like that. Yeah. I don't think that you can really do anything else aside from making their textures look better. Gotcha. Uh, Alex's camera went away. Yeah, he's sorry. dead. He's dead to us. Don't worry. I'm I'm still here. I'm see, trying to, I, I'm my something. my favorite thing is now they see me like four times, and it's really funny looking. <laughs> I'm dancing, Alex. Ooh. Um. Well, Alex is gone. Uh, well, I guess you can still talk to us, but... Yeah, I'm still here. But... I, I, I have to use my phone for the camera, mm -hmm. but my wife urgently messaging me, so I have to make sure, you know, she's okay. Of course, so... of course, of course. No, no judgment here. 
Uh, while Alex is attending to that, I will bring up, this is the part of the show where we, you know, kind of slow down. We you know this well. We take a step back. We think about the news we just talked about. We compliment our upcoming weekend. What are we going to play? What are we going to talk about next week? We come back to you. Now, I'm going to start this off today. I'm going to I'm gonna bring up, of course, we talked about Persona 5 Strikers. I'm incredibly excited to keep playing. Incredibly excited to try and get into the reasonings on why I, the game is happening. And I know that sounds weird to people who haven't played Persona, but Persona 5 ends pretty cleanly. So it's interesting that there's more story going on than, than, than what was already ended within Persona 5 Royal. So I'm interested in seeing the reasons on why I'm back in uh, Shibuya on why it's it's going on again what it, what's going on with this lady in the box what's going on with the major villain who's the major villain is there one it is it just a fun romp with my friends again am i gonna get in a relationship again i hope so alex you're back i want yeah i'm wondering if they're gonna like depending on what relationship you did i wonder if they'll you know for like for example i made a relationship with with uh, with on mm -hmm. so i wonder if she'll say anything or like about our relationship i don't think so i don't think i don't think they wanted to do that much work if i'm being honest i don't think they wanted to be like oh let's do that now I mean, it, now i would love to be wrong here look they had they've done enough wrong. work already okay okay i'm not i'm not i'm not I'm not, I'm not making fun of them of course i'm mm -hmm. just saying Maybe they were like, "Yeah, we don't want to do that right now. We're just fine. we're just focused on making the game good. The game good. You ain't gonna hear me complain." Look at Alex's pretty face. It stopped right in the middle there. It looks hilarious. Everyone, just take a second look at that face. That's a face a mother loved. There you go. He's back. Now, really quickly, Alex, what do mm. you? I don't even want to do that. I was about to be like, what do you want to do with this story? What do you think now? But before we get into that, I'll, let's let's end this show because I want to I want to talk to you about something that yeah. only spoilery spoilers can spoil. Now, oh, and I, you know me, I like to spoil stuff. You like to spoil stuff, so we got we gotta let everyone go. So we're gonna let everyone go. This is gonna be the normal end to the show, and this is gonna be like a fun little conversation at the end that you can stick around if you want to. Thank you so much for joining us. You can, of course, go over to youtube.com slash youtubers. You can't really go there because we don't have the URL yet, but you can search on YouTube, Easy Achievers. Click on that little thing. Subscribe, of course. You can like. You can comment. Comment something. And remember, I am always in the comment sections in the first few hours of upload, so you can chill there for a little while. You can a a ask a question, comment, concern, thought, or idea, or if you want to be a part of the show, patreon.com slash Easy Achievers, only a dollar guarantees you some access you can pm message me or alex personally and that tells you uh, you can actually ask a question if you want to be on the show you can make fun of us um we will of you course know, make fun of you back so just be prepared for that you know what i want i want on our page and somebody needs no, somebody needs to do it you remember at, in the old windows computers <laughs> but I, I don't remember if it's this i think it's vista and the little the little what paper the little paper clip assist guy okay and i know it's happy clippy and happy face that, yeah clicky yeah. and he would help you do stuff i want to be like on the like in our comment thing like where you gotta click the comment you just see my face like this and you'd be like i i start doing this i'm like just start pointing and stuff like my you can drag me around like somebody needs to make that if you want to make an incredibly complicated program like that go ahead make alex's i guess face into Clippy? Is that what you wanted? Yes. Make me Clippy. Okay, make Alex's face Clippy. So, <laughs> thanks or I'm sorry in advance <laughs> for whatever thing that's going to come out of that. Look, Thank you so it, much. Look, if it works, gold mine right there. Sure. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to get into spoils for WandaVision. Mm, for WandaVision. Wanda. So, yeah. cl click away if you don't want to hear that. And until then... Go achieve, but we'll also go achieve later. So go achieve right now, and then we'll go achieve the rest of the people before we leave. Go tonight. achieve, everyone. Yeah. Now, Alex, one division. Mm -hmm. Spoilers, three, two, one. All right. So, first off, I knew it. Banger. I called it. It was Agatha all along. Banger, banger of 2021. And I'm calling it right now. That is mm -hmm. a slap. I'm having a fun. You called it. I, I, I think what's interesting. Even more so than than saying the Agnes thing, because because I, I also called it too nuts to my own horn. I did notice mm -hmm. the brooch, brought mm -hmm. it up to to the yeah, yeah, to the, the wife. Mm -hmm. She always wears the brooch regardless of what she's wearing. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Now, I heard someone describe it as, okay, we know Agatha was messing with her. Mm-hmm. The the way this the the song is phrased is she wasn't really messing with Wanda, she was messing with whatever is being created or manipulating Wanda. So she was messing with that. Well, what do you think of that? Is she is she the big bad or is I, she big bad minus one? I think the way you said it's probably that's how it's supposed to be. But they made it seem like as soon as they said, it's like, oh, you know, Wanda, Wanda, it's just me, Agatha Harkness. And she, and she did the, the, the purpley stuff that looks like yeah. she was mind controlling Wanda, like how Wanda did to Tony in Age of Ultron. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that makes me think that she was actually just putting things in her head. Just, you know, she's not really controlling her, but like kind of rewiring her brain, kind of. Mm. I mean, she, Agatha Harkness is, you know, one of the original Salem witch, witches, so, you know, we don't know how much power this woman has. Right. And, and, you know, like, it was crazy how all of that was underneath the the, the mm-hmm. house. By the as way, soon as she was walking into the basement, I'm like, what? As soon as she asked where are the kids, it's, I mean, we all know. The kids are are not, I mean, are they real? Say they're it. Not real. Say it. Are they they're real or real. not? You know they're no. not real? Alright, Alex is saying they're not real. I don't know. I, I, think, if, I think they can be because, I mean, it, this is for sure based off of House of M. Oh, it, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the only thing is different is like, you know, the, with the whole House of M, you know, they do no more mutant. Yeah, 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 it's, it's, I know, I know. It, that That is, you know, there's similarities, but also huge differences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So really like, quickly, uh, though, I do think the kids are real and they're either A, kidnapped. Mm hmm. B, stolen from a different universe. C, yes. I'm wrong. <laughs> so it's, I, it's one of those three. I don't think they have, I, and I'm, be real, I don't think Dis- Disney, Marvel, whatever you want to call them, has the balls to make them not be real. I think they were not, but I think Wanda makes them, and I think eventually it'll stick that way. But I think it's because, I think... Uh, Agatha had something to do with it to where she could just make you know make them go away so that's when she was like where are the kids you know they're gone that or they're just trapped somewhere I don't know I don't know so, like they weren't originally I don't think they were actually born I think they were just created and it just made it seem like Wanda actually gave birth to them mm-hmm. It is dark man <laughs> that is dark if that's real if and that turns I'm out to be real that she faked a birth mm-hmm I think that's that's what I dark. Think. That's yeah. That's dark. I love it. I'm here for it. Don't don't and get now, me wrong. I'm, I want that to happen. I don't think they got it. Do you think Vision will regain his memories? Uh, I mean, he's already kind of there, right? Now he doesn't have his memories. It's whatever Darcy's telling him. Right, but. So okay, he, so, I'm saying like, what if what if Wanda like you know how Vision does that weird mind thing? Yeah. What if? He either either Vision goes to Wanda, does the mind thing so he can see. I don't know if he can do that. Or Wanda goes to him and does something and gives him the memories back so he can see everything. I see that. I see that happening. What you just said, okay. I, I'm like, if it happens, if if he gets memories back, it mm-hmm. won't be him remembering. Um, because I don't think yeah. there's memories there for him to remember. Because, like... Well, he was, he was, oh, he was alive all the way to Infinity War. Right, but like, he's being kept alive. Yeah, like by like, the like, magic. So like, is is the it? Stone's not even there, or the mind stone. Excuse me. Yeah, what I'm saying is like, is is it vision, like literally, or is it just his consciousness thinking Conscience. he's vision? So mm-hmm. if he is that, then he can't have memories because he's not real. Real. So if he gets those things, I do think Wanda just gives it to him. Oh. But it's weird because he has all the powers of vision, and you can tell he's strong enough it's, to get through the hex. It's weird. Like weird. he was pretty strong getting it's, through that thing, and he was just getting torn apart. Yeah, it's weird. I do not know what's going on, and I love now, that. Now, do you think? Because you know, we know Wanda is doing the the whole hex like 
big force field thing. Now, do you think is Wanda keeping Vision in, or do you think it's Agatha put something on Vision to keep him in? Who do you think is keeping Vision in? Vision can't leave because he'll die as soon as he leaves. So I don't think anyone's keeping him in. I think his 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 being well, alive it's, it's weird that kills him from leaving. It's weird that everything but him changes when they go in the hex and then comes out. Everything has changed. For example, even Rambo now has her powers. Mm-hmm. So that's most likely going to stay when she comes out. Right. When the car, when the truck thing went in, mm-hmm. half of it when it came out, it was a different vehicle. So it's not like it, it went in being a, it went in being a truck. Inside, it's a regular car, and when it came back out, it turned back to a truck. It right. didn't, mm-hmm. stayed. So what's the difference of making Vision being Vision for real in there, and coming out still being Vision for real? Like what's what's Be- the difference? Because when he leaves that bubble, he's Vision in a million pieces. Like, do you remember seeing that security camera of Scarlet Witch stealing Vision's body back? Yeah, yeah. He's well, going. Saying, he's going back to that to that version. Are you saying like, why doesn't he just walk out and just and just and fall into pieces? Well, there's a well. I'm saying why there's a reason why he's not changing, because everything else, like I said, that's what I'm saying. Everything that's going in there changes form, and when it comes back out, it stays that form. He's the only one that's not staying that form of him. his form is him being alive so like he was dead when he was out he went I in i think i see what you're saying so he, I, when he went in he's alive but when mm-hmm. he comes back out he's dead again but he's not staying alive he should be staying alive because that's how everything else is being tossed at, at being done i don't think whoever's doing that has enough power to keep him alive outside of the hex hmm. i think that's true tr- i think that's what's being communicated else. Because every every other item, everything else that's been going in and out has stayed the same. Right. Because I think that is like that's that's simple. That's not keeping a being alive, right? That's not like keeping a person I mean, that is dead alive. It's changing a truck to a to a car. I mean, they got human beings come in, like I mean that's gone in and out now. Right. Right. But they're not being kept alive by magic. They're- that's true that's true yeah that's my only point is depends on, who, it depends on who did the magic we don't know who actually we brought it back we don't we don't know the stipulations it could be that he's only like, alive if he's with wanda so i i i think agatha put something in her mind that she needs to go get vision and i think and oh i want oh i don't know i don't know this could go literally a million different ways it could be yeah. like it could because we know uh what's his name harkin something the evil shield sword guy oh uh we know he wants some hawkins hawkling i don't something, forget his name something like that he, he, we know that guy wants um vision alive vision alive for a weapon mm-hmm. so he is kind of like all right whatever he's he's a typical evil guy that wants a weapon mm-hmm. so we now know that the main antagonist as we know as is Agnes and whatever that book was whatever Wanda saw that book is doing something so the antagonist is as far as we know Agnes and then it's can, probably can, some, like old old grimoire book thing I'm sure it is I'm sure it is and I'm sure that's what's keeping the hex kind of mm-hmm. alive kind of not because now go ahead I was gonna say do you think because we know that Agatha was part of the whole Pietro fiasco. Do you think it's actually Pietro? Was it just like an imagination thing? That's that's the big question, and I'm sure everyone wants him to be Fox Quicksilver. The it's lame not. the lame thing is he was a guy that lived there. She took made... him from the universe thing. No, so <laughs> so there's there could be a possible a. It's just some dude that lived in the town that mm-hmm. she either gave Quicksilver's power or mm-hmm. messed with their mind enough to make them think Quicksilver is running around. Yeah. B, she plucked him from a different universe, which super sick if that's the case. I think it's that because that would make more sense with the upcoming Doctor Strange Madden, Multiverse of Madness thing, which Wanda's going to be in with Doctor Strange. I think at the end of the day, this is building up to that movie the mm. more we make that movie sense the more this show 
is makes good, sense. right? So, yeah. so the more sense that that makes, the more this makes sense. So, uh, g grabbing the knowledge of us knowing that movie's happening, I think it's correct that he's going to be from the Fox universe. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to slowly incorporate maybe other Fox people, or maybe they show them for like a movie and then they all die or something, and new Fox people come or something. I mm -hmm. don't know. Could go a million different ways. I'm waiting for Fantastic Four. Now, here's the thing. And Blade. Remember when Rambo said that they had a an aerospace engineer? Yep. Who do you think it is? I looked at her and I was like, uh, I was thinking I, Reed. I, well, my yeah, my wife was next to me. I was like, hey, Reed I mean, Richards. Is that is that Reed? Now, yeah. now I think that was technically spoiled. Was it? No, 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 no. I think that was second. That theory of him being an aerospace engineer. Oh, was okay. spoiled be, well, which which way are you talking about because i remember in the beginning of the show they said a couple aerospace engineers got lost in space are you talking about no, that no, no no well i noticed that's what they said because yeah they got lost in space which i mean it was that that's the fantastic four yeah but then she was like oh no i i know an so, aerospace engineer and so that's, I'm a, that's what she's talking about so when she says that i'm pretty sure she means the character in the next scene we see do you remember that because like mm -hmm. they build it up and then it's just a it's just a chick. Oh no, I don't know. Yeah, it was weird, super weird setup. I don't know if the show was messing with us, but she definitely made it seem like it was gonna be someone special. And then mm -hmm. just that lady that helped them with the um, jeep, you know that, oh. that the jeep that was her airspace buddy, the lady that said hi to them. Gotcha. That's why they had that giant jeep. That was the airspace. Yeah, yeah. So def definitely weird. I think they were messing with us a little bit to try and be like, huh, you thought it was fantastic, but it's not, huh? But I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I've kept you. Well, there's, I don't, I don't know if it was real or not, but there was a rumor that uh, Jennifer Lawrence is supposed to be casted as Sue Storm. No. no. Is it fake? Okay, no. that's all. Oh, no, I don't know if it's fake. I'm saying, oh, God, okay. please, no. <laughs> oh, Let's Jennifer see. Lawrence? Yeah, the one who played the one from Hunger Games and the one who played Mystique in the uh, the latest X Men movies. Uh, that seems weird. Which is weird because that was Fox, so they bring in another Fox person. Yeah, I, was, I don't know. Died. She wouldn't have to wear makeup, so she wouldn't hate it that much. Mm -hmm. She hated that makeup. It's hilarious. She. That's why I think she, that's hated, why she didn't do it anymore. She hated that makeup so much. Isn't, oh my god. Isn't, that the reason why she like they didn't do it anymore because she hated it so much. She hated it so much. She that's why she doesn't have it on that much after that first movie, and then mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure they you know did what they did to her in the last movie. Hint, hint, no nudge. Um, yeah, there's like spoilers like, well, for that movie. She dies. So, <laughs> uh, so like, it's clear that she did not want to be in that movie anymore. Mm -hmm. Alex, I've kept you long enough. Thank you for joining me today to talk about some news yep nope you're, you're dancing hey man i'm i got me mountain dew i'm about to go either mm, i didn't play apex last night so i need to go play some tonight i might play some destiny trials i don't know um our normal third flaked out so we're gonna have to find someone else now and you gotta do the thing where you're like are you but are you good because we're trying to win but you know yeah, yeah, yeah. but hey, i'll do with it later thank you so much for joining us for the spoilery side of the show for one of it thank you remember like subscribe comment share patreon.com shoot us a question love you go achieve